In the next few minutes, you're going to learn an incredible technique to generate unlimited grunge effects in Photoshop. It's quick, fully editable, and you don't need any brushes. So first of all, I have my text in Photoshop. I also have this file here, which has a nice grungy texture on it, and I'll be using this to generate the effect. And you can use any image you like, and you can go to something like unsplash.com and grab any texture from there. And once you've found a lovely texture, just make sure you set the mode to grayscale and eight bits per channel. And you will need to save this as a separate PSD file. I also have another texture here that I'll be using for decoration, and if you'd like to follow along you can download all of these in the video description. Right, first of all let's convert the text layer to a smart object, and then go to filter, down to distort, and select displace. And for this step we're only going to focus on the horizontal and vertical scaling. Essentially the higher you increase these values, the more intense the effect will be on that axis. So I'll keep it fairly low to start with, and then I'm going to select that PSD file, the one with the nice grungy texture. And if I select open, you can see it applies that texture as a displacement to the text. However, if we zoom in, you can see it looks a bit pixely. So let's go to filter and apply a little bit of blur. This is going to help soften that aliasing a little bit and make it look a bit more realistic. We can also go and apply some noise. So let's select add noise. And I'm going to keep this value super low. Let's not drag it all the way to the right. That's a little bit too much. But again, this is totally optional. Right, this is looking pretty good, but we're not done yet. So let's go over to this other texture and select all and copy. Then let's go back to the main document and paste this in. Now this texture is quite big. So let's zoom out and select free transform and just scale this down a bit. And then once you're happy, press return to set that transformation. Now let's go and change the blending mode. You can pick any one of these, but I'm going to use hard light, which I think works best for this effect. I'm also going to add a levels adjustment layer and simply by adjusting the slider for the midtones, I can make the effect more or less pronounced. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Now because we're working with a smart object, all of these effects are editable. So if I double click the displacement effect and then click OK, I can change these values and try again. And I'm going to use the same PSD file for the displacement, but you can use as many as you like. We can now double click the thumbnail of the smart object to go back inside. And here we have the editable text and we can also expand the canvas. So let's give ourselves some more space top and bottom. And now I can change the text or the font, or I can jump into Illustrator and grab a vector graphic. So here you can see I have the Apple logo. Let's copy and paste this back into Photoshop and we'll paste this in as a smart object as well. And again, press return to set that transformation and let's just hide the other text layer and maybe nudge this up a bit. Now we can save the smart object file and go back to the main document and those changes are updated. You can also hold down Alt or Option and click between layers and this will clip the layers above so that they only apply to the layer below. Now let's introduce some color. So first of all, we're going to add a gradient map and we can use this to remap different colors to the shadows, midtones and highlights in the image. And you can see from the gradient editor, we have lots of different presets. So let's just click through a few of these. And as you can see, some of these are a bit more extreme than others. And I think I'll settle for this one, but I can double click on each of these color swatches and drag them around or change the color as well. And you can also use this option here to completely reverse the entire gradient. And again, holding Alt or Option, let's click just under the gradient map layer to clip this to the smart object. And this is looking pretty cool. And remember everything from the text to the fonts and color is fully editable. Now I'm also going to copy and paste this texture in once more and then bring down the opacity and just use this as a kind of background. And I'm also going to go back into the smart object and bring back that text. So just to demonstrate, let's change this to McFlunge. And I have absolutely no idea what that is. But if I save and close, you can see those changes are updated. Lastly, let's scale this down. And you can tell me in the comments exactly what the heck McFlunge means.